السلام عليكم everyone so uh, this is some exercise about complex number more precisely about modulus inequalities and so on so let's let uh, s be a real number and u be a complex number such that the absolute value or the modulus or the module of uh, u is equal to one show without using the algebraic form that the absolute value of x minus uh, u is equal to uh, the absolute value or modulus of 1 minus x u. So uh, since we have the absolute value of u or the modulus of u is equal to 1, this gives us that u times u uh, conjugate is equal to 1. And then u is equal to 1 over the conjugate of u. So, 1 minus x u is equal to 1 minus x. This one is equal to u. And we take the conjugate of u here, minus x over u conjugate. From here, we use the modulus properties so this is equal to u conjugate minus x over the conjugate of u this is equal to one so we get this one since x is a real number so it is equal to this and from this we know that in the case uh, when the uh, moduli of u is equal to one this means that the moduli this one <laughs> is equal to this one since the modulus is equal to one, but the modulus of a complex number is equal to the modulus of the same complex number. This concerns the first exercise. The se second exercise show without using the algebraic form that if you and they are two complex numbers of modulus equal to one, each of u and v have a modulus equal to one. Then this division is a real, pure real number. And this one is a pure, imaginary one what we can say about this one so the solution we say that uh, a complex number is a pure real if and only if the conjugate is equal to the number and we say that it's pure imaginary if the conjugate of z is equal to minus z. So we set, we set this complex number by u. And we take the conjugate of u. This is a basic, basic operation. This is basic operation. <laughs> And it is equal to u. This means that u is a pure real number. The second part, we put v equal to capital V equal to u plus v over u minus v. And we take the conjugate. When we take the conjugate, once again, once again, elementary basic calculation gives us minus v. This means that v is a pure imaginary uh, complex number. How about u plus v oh, divided by one minus uv? We did the same thing. <laughs> Sorry. We take, so we take the conjugate basic operation 
and we have minus W. This means that W is a pure imaginary complex number. The third exercise, let us consider Z1, Z2, and Z3. Three uh, consider num uh, complex sorry, numbers with modulus equal to one of each of these three complex numbers. Compare the modulus of this sum and this sum. What we can do, so we can take the modulus of this one and we take the square. The square has a definition, but we can write it as the complex number multiplied by its conjugate. If we consider here the conjugate of all this, so they are the sum of the conjugate. We take the product, which means Z1 times Z1 conjugate, Z1 times Z2 conjugate, Z1 times Z3 conjugate, Z2 times Z1 conjugate, and so on. Don't forget that we have Z1, Z2, and Z3 are complex number, but with modulus, with absolute value or moduli equal to one. If they are of this property, so this one is equal to one, and this one is equal to one, and this one is equal to one. <clears throat> so we replace this in this formula, we will get three plus Z1, Z2, conjugate, Z1, Z3 conjugate, Z2, Z1 conjugate, Z2, Z3 conjugate, Z3, Z1 conjugate, and Z3, Z2 conjugate. <coughs> we take Z1 as a common factor, and we will get this formula. On another hand, we take the second, the modulus square and we times this complex number by its conjugate one. And we have here hard work, I am just joking, two times this one by this one and so on. Don't forget that Z1, Z1 conjugate and Z2, Z2 conjugate, Z3, Z3 conjugate are equal to one. So it gives us this one, take your time to verify. This means that they are equal and we finish by saying that this one and this one have the same modulus. The last exercise for today, I think that is, uh, no, before the last one, show that for every complex number of modulus equal to one, we can write it as this form. So we take any given complex number. Our condition is to have a modulus equal to one and we can write it like this. What we can do, we can take complex number with modulus equal to one. Euler formula permits us to write it like this. But here we uh, we uh, put phi different of kp to uh, eliminate the case when z is equal to one. So in this case, z is equal to the exponential of e phi, which is equal to exponential e phi over two over exponential minus e phi over two. We can this 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 number complex number is exactly this one. And there we develop Euler formula. We take cos phi over two common factor, and we will find this one if we take conjunct phi over two 
as x, we will get our desired formula. Very simple. Evaluate the modulus and the argument of z, which is like this. <laughs> so, first of all, we suppose that alpha is different of pi over 2 plus kp. This is to uh, eliminate the case z equal to 1. Then we take, we write the definition of tangent alpha, which is sine alpha over cosine alpha. We take cosine here and here, and we take cosine as a factor. But this one can be written, one over this one can be written cos alpha minus e sine alpha. It is sufficient to multiply it by its conjugate, and this is the conjugate of this one. This one with this one, the product gives us one, and we retain this here. <coughs> so here we have two cases. The argument is alpha, for instance, but the modulus is cosine alpha. If cosine alpha is negative, it cannot be the modulus. So we have two cases. If alpha lies between minus p over 2 and p over 2, cosine alpha is positive. And in this case, it is equal to this. Cosine is a even equation, a function, and sine is add a function. So this formula can be right in this. And then we get that the modulus of z is equal to cosine alpha, and the argument of z is equal to minus alpha plus 2kp. The second case, if cosine alpha is negative, this means that alpha is between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. In this case, we times cosine alpha by minus 1, so cosine alpha is negative. If we times is it by minus one, it became positive. So this is positive. But since we times by minus one, we have to times, uh, sorry, we have to times this by minus one. To times this by minus one, we should write it as a sum of cosine and sine, but just here we, change here and this is exactly minus cosine alpha so the modulus is equal to minus cosine alpha and the argument is equal to pi minus alpha plus 2 chi p this is the end thank you very much see you next time inshallah